Hello, Tom. Sorry for the late start, just um, copying our page over and then I'll, I'll share our agenda for today. Let me get logged in. Time, time shifts are a bear. <laughs> hey, Roto. Hey, how you doing? Good. Just hey, getting out. Just getting a little bit of a late start. Time shifts are tough. <laughs> yeah, I'm also in the airport, so. Okay. Oh so, yeah, I gonna need to drop. Yeah, no, they... no worries. Yeah, no might worries. be a might be a shorter one today, depending. We'll see. Thomas, uh, Tom, if you'd like to come off mute, I don't know if you had been talking before, but I hadn't heard anything. But if you wanted to uh, start giving us an update, I've seen a, a bunch of of your work going while I get the page set up. We'd be happy to hear uh, how things are going. I think I saw it, uh, Peer did too, work and some other things. I don't know if you're still trying to talk, but you're on mute. Okay. I don't see anything in the chat, so I don't know. Maybe Tom can't come off mute, and that's okay. All right. So let me publish our page. Oh, I see him. He's here. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Did you uh did you want to give us some updates on uh your Nessus work? Uh yeah, I can I can just a quick one. Um <clears throat> I looked at did Pia, you know, did Pia uh num algo two and tried to rework the you know the out of band invitation thing so that the uh the, the document attachment is is optional, right? So, yeah. so what we now have is is uh, I got rid of the um, did v two switch command line switch, or yeah, because um, I assume that the other side speaks did v two, and if the other side is Agapi, I know that it doesn't, right? So if if I talk to to Agapi, then it uses the old protocol, so there's no need to to switch anymore, and and get protocol confusion. Uh, but I must say, I'm, I'm generally not so clear about how, how this is supposed to work, right? And uh, with, um, uh, with it peer num algo two. And, and the reason is that uh, the inviter generates the invitation and the invitation now contains just uh, the did, you know, which can be resolved and an endpoint can be discovered from the did and, and the did happens to be a did peer. Uh, and, and then of course the, the invitee can make the connection and so on. Uh, but I'm, what I'm not clear about is, is um, that 
invitation is seems to be in a sense it seems to be public right so so whoever gets their hands on the invitation right has has at least a did and an endpoint uh, to connect to and and the inviter doesn't really know you know whether um whether that invitation is really coming from from the intended invitee right so so th th this is a thing I, I, i'm sort of i'm i'm aware of that this is a chicken and egg problem right and and maybe this has been solved in a you know more intelligent way uh, or maybe this is by design the way it is you know but um, but but that was a you know uh how do you say uh, uh, a, a tripping stone, right? So tripping point. Right. right. Then you have the same issue with this beer one, right? I yeah, of course. With the other yeah, one. Yeah. This is not you <laughs> know, the chicken egg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, no, no, no. This this is not this is not uh, uh, it's not coming from it peer two. It's a general issue. That, um, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Sixteen is public, so everybody can can read. Maybe if you are, you can generate in your wallet and show to only one people, but that's that's the only interaction that you can trust, right? If you show personally, yeah, yeah. In a, a private place, okay, this is only for you. You see it, I know, it, but you scan yeah. it. And, but then I think the 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 way it should work is well. After that, you start with that connection you have this upper layer protocols and trying to find something on that yeah but in a way it's, it's <laughs> in a way it's the root of trust isn't it you know because if if your invitation falls in the wrong hands then the other party can pretend to be whoever right and and i'm fully aware that this is probably very much related to the old did ex, uh, to the old key exchange problem Right, so that that's always a very hard one, I think. Although I don't know much about it, um, but you know, I'm just saying that that this is the current state yeah. of my understanding, and right, um, uh, and it is it is that way. Yeah, yeah. the only thing that you and, can do is just ask for a credential. And also, uh, maybe if you if you like the credential, you can maybe um, better know who, who's the other. Person. Uh, it's, it's it's very choppy. I don't un, I don't hear you properly, Rodolfo. Unfortunately. Yeah, I caught it just it's a little probably bit. Probably on my end. Oh, let, let me. I'm gonna move to another uh, place. Yeah, I'm walking around the airport. I can yeah. hardly hear you. Yeah, he's in the airport. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tom, Tom, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, let me try this. Okay, then, Brodo. I think you were pretty good. So I think I think that was on Tom's end. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I hear you well. And there was like a li it was like a little bit wavy, but I I could understand you, you know, very well. So I think that's on Tom's end. Yeah, it's interesting the idea of um asking for a credential. I mean, we can talk about it when Tom comes back, but well, here he is. Tom, how do we sound now? I just got rid of I got rid of my uh, screen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you, Tom. It, that was interesting. So Roto was mostly clear for me, uh, and and your video was clear, and your audio was clear. But yeah, I think something happened on maybe your end. If I wasn't clear, because well, I, maybe my maybe my connections also have problems. Oh, it's, it's fine now. It's, it's clearly on my end. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can Can you hear me well now? Yeah. 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 yeah what, what I'm saying, Tom, is maybe after you, yeah, you 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 share this out of band, then the the inviter should should maybe ask for a credential or something that you can make your uh, yeah to validate something extra and see if the, yeah if you are okay. talking to the right person. Yeah, but yeah. I yeah, I think that's the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way. Okay. So th this is first you establish the connection. And then you get the trust ping going, so both sides know who to talk to, and and then they need to have some other form of authenticating each other. Is is that what you are you saying? I 
Yes, yes, right. So, but the, yeah. we did only, yeah, yes, this group of concerts. So, you know, if you see intuitions, you know, <laughs> there are the other Asians, right? Alice and Bob. That's uh, every time we did the same, right? And we don't go with those credentials as he, sorry for the noise, right? So, in the middle of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> give me some. Yeah, he's in the airport, so. Yeah, it's a good question. Um... So as a side effect of this, yeah, the, the did peer. So that, uh, the project from Sigma has been dormant for some time, yeah, nine months or so. So so that needed to get resurrected before I can actually integrate it. Yeah. So as a as a side effect, there's a few, you know, commits to to the did peer project that bring it up to speed to current Kotlin compilers and so on and so on. And then there was some issue with uh, the document uh, serialization as well. So that got fixed. So so the the did peer project now, uh, at least in the Java space, um, is is usable again. You know. So so that is it, not sure if it's really that much useful in Nessus, but but it's you know maybe better than what we had before. And um, and also if you're interested. Uh, I have another funny story. I tried to connect with uh, with the decentralized identity foundation with Div, right? So and and I was asking, I was asking whether IBM or Red Hat is already a member of the Div, right? And so the managing director came back to me, Claire, Claire something. I forgot her surname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and she, you know, she seemed to be very excited that somebody from IBM is asking and she wanted to set up a, a voice thing and everything, right? So, but but I'm in no position, right, to to speak in the name of IBM, of course, right? Not even in the name of Red Hat, not even in the name of my team in Red Hat, right? So, and and I, I ask what what it would actually cost, right? And what it would cost and, and what would the benefits be for for our organization to 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 join and and the answer was, well, you know, uh, IBM has more than 10,000 employees, so it would be 50K a year, right? 50K. <laughs> and, and I said, okay, thank you very much. And I'll, I'll talk to a few people. I'll talk to a few people and see what I can do, right? And, and five minutes later, she says, oh, you know, I, it, it could be 10K if, if, if that makes a difference, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I go, well, yeah, okay, very nice, but I don't know if it makes a difference. I still need to talk to people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, okay. So, selling, selling the stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is where it, this is where it, it ended, um, and I'm actually now, you know, I'm really trying to sell the idea. I'm really trying to to sell that technology, and and I'm always, as you know, you know, I'm making the 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 use case with with the airport the unnamed yes. airport right and and um, and I think it would be hugely beneficial if if that tech would actually eventually you know be in our integration product because that's what we do you know we integrate stuff right and, yeah and and so um, but you know at at our end. Um, it it only resonates with my, you know, with my manager really. You know, he is very supportive, right? But but he is sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, keeping my my back clear and allows me to to work on this stuff when time permits, right? But now it seems that that we have we have priority, uh, company strategy and everything, every little thing has to be directly related to company strategy right so so if this is not company strategy you know i i can do this more or less in my spare time right and <laughs> and of course you know this this is uh, a flexible definition what spare time actually is but but yeah i i wish i wish there would be more resonance in in red hat or ibm so if you know somebody in ibm uh who i can talk to you know that that would be great, right? Mm. I I know they had a they had a supply chain uh, group uh, that was blockchain related, uh, 
but nobody related to to didcom right so right so this is at least how far i got and this is why i'm telling you this right so this is where it stands yeah because i was hoping you know if if i if i can actually find somebody from ibm then maybe they can pay for me coming to to the the iiw meeting yeah. right yeah um i'm trying to remember the last time there was an ibm person in what meeting and maybe roto also uh, has come across some ibm folks but I, I definitely came across an IBM person mm -hmm. in the last month or two. I want to say it might have been the OWF, Open Wallet Foundation. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't recall. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that oh. um, for sure. Um, and certainly Roots ID is no stranger to <laughs> trying to do as much as we can in our free time while we have our uh, customer uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> work, yeah, yeah customer specific work. Um, uh, speaking of IAW, uh, yeah, I mean, we are certainly trying to get as much uh, going for there in terms of the airport, um uh example i think probably that would be like a fall thing that we would shoot for because it uh, as best as i can tell the yeah. the spring iiw did come v2 stuff will be just showing you know interaction messaging basic messaging and mm -hmm. you know maybe a couple other mm -hmm. protocols um between agents from different vendors, uh, right. if, if we can say it that way. Um, so next week, if you like, you know, or, or, or the week after, I could do another demo and, and I have credentials uh, ready, verifiable credentials more or less ready. So okay. I hope to have, I hope to have the, the airport example completed. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, yeah, and and it would work with what what portion of the airport credential? Um, yeah, like which credential for for the airport scenario? All of them. All of them. Okay. Yeah, all of them. So so it starts with, you know, it starts with a schema, and I could I can show how you how you define the schema, and then I can show you how you how you create uh, verifiable credentials and how you um, and how the verifier can use um, these open policy agent o OPA, I think. So, so it's it it can use you can apply all sorts of uh, verification policies to a verifiable credential, right? In a in that in that special language. Yeah, I forgot what it's called, but but OPA is is the thing you would want to be look at and. And the roadblock I, I hit there was conceptual, the conceptual roadblock was, was that you can uh, verify, well, you can verify the credential as a whole, right? But it's not possible to disclose just certain attributes from it. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, so that was, of course, you know, I thought there might be tricks. Right. So if a verifier asks you for for a presentation, you could go in that time, you could go back to the issuer and ask the issuer to provide you with a verifiable credential that just contains the attributes that the that the verifier asked for. But but this would this approach would surely not scale, of course, right? And yeah. And and the way to go seems to be zero knowledge proofs. Right. So what type of credentials are you using? W, w, W3C credentials would that be? No. Which ones? Okay. And inside w, of, yeah. W3C JSON LD. Uh that is a question of representation. Yeah, but but yes. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the selected is cluster you're gonna have if you use anon right? Maybe we go with Akapai, 
you can use it because it's eleven. Yeah. Does uh, uh so are we saying that JSON LD doesn't provide selective disclosure? Um I, mean, if... I think no, unless you have this the PBS plus the oh. option that is not that I think it's not available. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So um right, but a non-creds would be more complicated. Okay. So um is this something that we could show in Roots Wallet in the near term. What what would we need to do in order to interact with? I, I Tom, think we. Tom I think we. I'm so, oh, so, sorry. Are you asking Rodolfo? I'm sorry. Either yeah, but either of you. I mean, you know, if if we can speak Didcom v two, obviously that's uh, that helps. But I I um, don't remember if we've displayed JSON LD credentials in Roots Wallet and wh what else are we missing? Uh, yeah, but we need to check that if uh, with Alex, if there's- Okay. How far are, are we with that? But uh, yeah, we, we should definitely can do it that way with that version. Even in W3C, I don't know if, if what you're using, Thomas, is the JSON LD or the JWT. There are many options inside the W3C. It can so do both. We, yeah, so JWT, for sure, we, we are doing that. So and it's really easy mm. to, okay. to make those credentials. So we can define a, like the type and then work on, on that and see if you yeah. issue, can issue a credential to the roots one, something like yeah. that. Excellent. Uh, so so I'll, I'll do the presentation and, and then we, we, we see, you know, what we can do. And, and maybe we can have a little workshop together or something, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I, um, and if I, I didn't realize you were that far along, um, so that that's something that we could display at IAW as like maybe an, an introductory scenario that we could try to get more participants to join in. Yeah. So yeah. that we can just show, you know, a wider variety ecosystem. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I, I, this this will be ready for when, when is the thing in mid April or end April? Uh, uh yes, uh, April eighteenth, I think, is okay. uh yeah. the start date, and it's three days. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm in no rush, right? So I, I need to I need to you know tie a few loose ends and and bring it all together, but. But this this will certainly I think I can get this done in in March, right? And yeah. then depending on how it goes, I'm as I say, you know, I'm in no rush. But if you think it's useful for a demo, and uh, then we can you know make an effort to make it happen. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how and far we I, get. You know, even if I if I can't go, it's it's not a problem, right? Yeah, and at the very least, we we also want to. We had the idea of a video for, especially for those who can't attend. But mm -hmm. at least we, you know, would have a recording of you know interactions and and could talk about mm -hmm. Nessus and our integration, you know, yeah. that way. And yeah, I mean, honestly, anything. You know, last time we demoed just uh, did v two between two roots wallets that had the same, essentially, agent uh you know architecture uh, this this month uh, or this time we want to show multiple uh agents so same same front end but multiple uh mm -hmm. agents behind it but then obviously we want to mm -hmm. interact with as many other agents as possible and you know start talking about scenarios uh, that we could build towards so I, I think you know the top on the top of, of my priority list would be the idea of the TCK, you know, I, I would like to push that really uh, urgently, probably with diff, right? So the question is who owns who owns the TCK, right? And then this is probably not Roots and probably certainly not Nessus, right? So, but th there needs to be some some home for for the TCK and then as many agents as possible to sort of flog around it and and try stuff. Um, uh, in in the scope of 
of a given TCK version, really, right? So that would be ideal, you know, for to push ad adoption, to define a set of functionality that everyone must comply with to, to get that checkbox, if you know what I mean, right? Level, yeah. level A, B, C, or whatever they are called, right? So, so that would be ideal. And, and I found, uh, I, I found- can, uh, uh, can you tell me TCK? Yeah, technology uh, compatibility kit. Ah, yes, right. So similar yeah. to like the AIP concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, Rodolfo, you didn't hear that last time. It was like a offline conversation. So in, in the Java world, there's this notion of TCK, right? Technology compatibility kit. And uh, formerly it was owned by Sun and then Oracle acquired Sun, of course. And um, if if you if you want to provide a, a compliant um, Java application server, J2EE, uh, J2EE server, uh, then you need to license the TCK. And that, that is big business, right? Licensing, licensing the TCK costs a lot of money. And then you have like thousands of tests and, and you, you pass those tests. And only then you can say you have a, you have a Java EE application server. Right, you, you're not allowed to use the brand Java EE, you know, unless you've passed the TCK, right? So in in Ditcom, in Ditcom, Ditcom it, it could be similar, right? So so you, you there, there could be a brand established around uh, what it means to to be ready for interoperability. You give it a name, right, and and maybe it has levels or maybe it has sections or whatever, right? And but there there must be somebody who owns that TCK and and it must be must be somebody uh, who is not who is not at the same time an agent, right? And, yeah. and in Java in Java it is the case that there is the TCK and there is also the reference implementation, right? So there is the reference implementation is always right, you know, unless proven wrong, but. But and and that worked really well, at least from from you know uh, what I have seen in in those many years in Java EE. When you say reference implementation in the Didcom context, are we talking like what yeah. Sigma is providing? Well, it it would be an agent that passes the TCK, right? And it would by it would probably be the first agent who passes the TCK, right? And <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry, I, I need to drop for maybe sure. some minutes until I, I'll board the plane <laughs> and I try to reconnect. Okay, okay, yeah, no worries. Okay, bye. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yeah, thank you for jogging my memory uh, on that. Um, okay. So that is, I mean, all of that sounds great. Um, obviously, the community is small. So I, I'm, I'm with you that um, essentially we have to make it happen, right? As a community, that's the whole point. That's why we started this meeting. Um, uh, and yeah, they're really, um, I don't know how to... stir these kinds of things up you know within like an IBM or uh, or, or or things like that like how, how I other than essentially all of us setting up services showing integration demonstrating it you know creating hypothetical scenarios that are hopefully attractive um hooking up buzzword things like chat GPT, you know, to a did come in point, like all these kinds of things, like beyond, you know, building software, I don't know how to cause adoption or, or cause investment um, into these things. I, I, am, I personally think that, that the diff should own it, right? And, and there, should be, there should be an initiative within the diff that provides the TCK, right? Because they have they have a digital identity in in their name, right? So so they should be very much interested in interoperability because because uh, 
you know, self-sovereign identity is nothing without interoperability, right? So this is the whole point. No? Yeah. So, so you need you need to have these back end wallets seamlessly to communicate with each other, and and a little later you want to see a front end wallets, yeah, communicating with each other and communicating with these back ends, and and for that to happen, you need a very strong body of standards uh, of of specifications, and as you know, you know, with every specification there is always some or, or a lot of room of interpretation right and, yes. and and these gaps they need to be filled by by the tck right so they they need to dis um, um disambiguate what's the word disambiguate yeah disambiguate yeah you yeah disambiguate you know uh, they they need to disambiguate these these specs so so that everybody knows what um uh what they need to do right and yeah so and, and i well, think the diff would be the right home for it i think yeah and and there uh, there's a, a lot of posting recently in the uh didcom user group by uh, fabio pinero who we we work with him mm -hmm. um because he's an iog uh guy i'm just looking but he was basically saying yeah where is this didcom v2 test harness like this needs yeah. to be something hosted yes. that yeah. everyone can can yeah. hit exactly exactly that's that's what i mean yeah yeah uh to what uh, fabio i'm just gonna put his name because i don't think he's on uh, is asking for in didcom okay so maybe uh, I'm always trying to figure out, you know, okay, we're whipping up this this uh, interopathon, you know, for IW, but you know, what should we come out of that with? Maybe that's what we need to bind together for is basically what you're saying: a reference implementation on test harness that we we collectively make sure this is. The shining star right that 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 it's the north star that everyone is is you know coding towards um he was complaining for instance uh one of the sigpa libraries i can't remember which one he was using it was probably the java one but uh yeah essentially he he was getting some um typ field that he wasn't expecting uh, and it was embedded in a way that he wasn't expecting. So uh, on the on the diff didcom user group, he, um, there was a whole discussion going back and forth about, you know, why is this returning something wrong? And I, I believe they've submitted a PR for it. Uh, oh no, it was in the SIGPA Python library. So yeah, I mean, we're gonna keep finding these things, but yeah, there needs to be kind of, yeah, that test harness that we can all just say, I am what percentage, you know, yeah, on the test exactly. harness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And and there's this business angle to it as well, right? So if, right. if, if you could, if we could, so, you know, for me, it's funny to, to say these things because I'm not even a member of the diff, right? And, okay. And it's not, it's, it seems to be a kind of difficult to become a member because I have these, 10,000 employees in the back, they all want to become members, right? And there's this price tag associated with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a bit awkward at the moment. Um, but but yes, I think I think there needs to be a project on GitHub that has does all the tech, right? So the um the architecture of the TCK itself needs to be defined, yeah, how, how this should work. Right. Yep. And, and encryption comes into the game and what should it see and what is the contract with with the TCK and how can it verify that stuff is actually working. Right. And and then there is uh, the business angle to it. Right. So what does it is it, can is, is there a license associated with it? Is there a brand associated with it? Right. So yep. can anyone claim that he is compatible without proving what is the process of proving that that you've actually that you've actually are compliant right so so all these questions need to be answered i think in java it was self certification yeah it it was not 
some police turning up in your shop and then looking over your shoulder that you actually pass it, it was self -cert certifying. Okay. Yeah? And so and and I th I think if I remember correctly that that is was the way it worked, but it does not necessarily have to be the way it works with diff, right? So, but it needs to be defined so that people know what it means, right? And to how to become compliant, what it means, you know, is is this available in various levels or is this just one shot, right? Does it cost yeah. anything or? Right. So so that you in your broader in your little, you know, in, in your roots wallet, is is there a logo that you know that proves that you are TCK that, that you are compliant with that name, right? Yeah. Roots wallet is DITCOM compliant, right? And and there's a little logo to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is another chicken in the egg, right? Where no one's going to care about that logo unless uh, a bunch of us start yeah. in integrating with each other and doing things. So, yeah. but adoption is hard if we don't all have a reference implementation and test harness to, yeah. to work with. So, yeah. okay. Well, I, I'm. It seems that there's a movement for this. Um, and so let's try to make that one of the results of the IAW in a Yeah. It's, is a, a, a joint effort to make a test harness that exists. Yeah, yeah. I think that's good. And somehow start providing a score. I mean, we can definitely use the Aries agent test harness as, a, as an example um, for that. Yeah, good. Interesting. Okay. Um, you haven't done anything with OIDC, correct? No, I okay. haven't. I yeah. came across it because it's it's heavily used in in Vault. Yeah. Okay. And and Vault uses it before Epsi uses it a lot. Yeah. So, so Walt wants to position itself uh, well within the European Community effort. Yeah. And for that, they have they have this open ID communication thing. Okay. Uh, it's on my list. You know, I I know very little about it. I only watched a few YouTube videos about it, but I can't say that I really know what it is. And it's not integrated in Nessus yet, but it will be. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, the, the reason that that was mentioned last time is um, there had been a session at IAW where they sh were talking about, uh, you know, people talk OIDC versus DIDCOM, but the truth is they have overlap, but they're not, they don't completely overlap, right? Uh, oh, and, yeah. and so they were talking about ways that you could be issued a credential over OIDC for VC, but then, you know, did use that credential, uh, you know, in, in a variety of DIDCOM V2 um, protocols, but, you know, obviously as a, a pre present proof. So th this is obviously a much more advanced topic than um, the work that we're doing for DIDCOM, but um, yeah, it, it would be nice to if, if there's agents that we're integrating that already have OIDC for VC support then why not leverage that support and show a workflow that includes it so that may be something we don't do in the spring here basically if there's two agents that can do it and we have time to you know practice a demo then we would do it um but something to consider as well um okay and i wanted to I can probably come. I can probably make the the uh, the fall meeting because I expressed my dismay loud enough <laughs> at, at you know various. Uh, yeah, I, I think I you know we should be able to go to these things and and meet with people in person and actually you know get inspired by others and and show our own work and it should be possible to do this at least once a year. 
Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just looking really quickly at the Open Wallet Foundation. As they announced their sponsors, I was just going to check really quickly. I don't know if you knew if IBM's already on that. Okay, so Diff is on there, Hyperledger's on there, Trust over IP's on there. Okay, but there's no, no IBM. We have uh, Accenture and Visa and, okay. So we had um, listed the agents that we were hoping might participate um, at IAW. Um, we haven't heard. So Ariel's going to be there. Animo is actually going to be there as well. Um, but we don't know if AFJ will actually have the DIDCOM V2 support necessary. Bjorn's going to be there from Block Trust. Brian said he's in. It looks like Indicio is interested. Bruce is also interested. Obviously, Roots ID is. Uh, and then a Taliprism. Uh, they, it sounds like Tony's going to come from IOG, Tony Rose. Um, so at the very least, we'll have a recording of, of our, um, our interop with them over Didcom V2, but um, they might actually be in attendance. So they have an example chat app that um, we did a quick, uh, you know, Didcom V2 messaging with. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's good as well. So, um, do you want me to just call it Nessus here and, uh, yeah, uh, might, uh, might be a recording. Yeah. Okay. How do these things work when you when you do these interop uh, sessions? Do people actually sit in the same room and try stuff out, or? Um, so that at IIW, yes, they tried to do that last uh, in in the fall. Uh, so we had done there. There's a demo hour, uh, but then you can have a session on anything at any time uh, mm -hmm. at IIW. Uh, and so we had done our demonstration in the demo hour for Roots Wallet with uh, two Roots Wallets doing, uh, you know, chat uh, messaging over Didcom V2. And then that kind of spurred others, other agents who support Didcom V2 to say, well, let's try to get together and do an interopathon, right, in, in, a, in a session. And so uh, Alex was in that session. He, they tried with Veramo, uh, with Nick and them. But because... Uh, and also, I think Brian might have been in there as well. But at that time, um, I don't think any of the agents other than ours had been settled on the SIGPA library. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure Brian had implemented his own crypto. And I'm not sure what Veramo had at that point. I think I think the problem with Veramo's was their implementation had been prior to the... Um, they had done their implementation before Didcom V2 had been accepted by the diff, so it had changed uh, enough. And so essentially interop, it didn't happen. No, 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 nothing was able to interop. But I think people have solidified much more on the SIGPA libraries, which helps a lot um, to avoid some of the issues, um, including, you know, a teleprism definitely, um, if they're not using the libraries, they essentially are making sure they're compliant with the SIGPA libraries. So. As, yeah, we would get in, get together in a room. But what I'm hoping is that if we get the word out now that we've essentially practiced, right? Yeah. So that when we're together, we're mostly having success. We know where we fail and we can essentially, you know, talk more about like 
well, a test harness, you know, let's, how yeah. would we implement that so that everyone can, yeah. can start to use it. So that's my hope is instead of it being, you know, a last minute type maneuver um, that we're prepared. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it, how it goes. Um, yeah, we had just talked about obviously basic message, uh, trust ping. Well, I guess basic message, routing, um, discover features would be nice. But yeah, I mean, obviously this is uh, this is where we'll sit. There's there's several didcom agents. Uh, well, I guess at least one that maybe doesn't even care about issue credentials. So that's fine. And right. You, and yeah, what, about, what about verify? Yeah, uh, certainly. Um, yeah, it would be nice to show the full triangle, the trust triangle. <laughs> yeah. um, validation is also a topic, schema validation. There are various, various uh, formats you could use. Yeah, I, I would. I, I think this will be a smaller group of us, but um, yeah, I mean, we we would certainly be happy to to do these things with with you, uh, and then yeah, if, as long as we have success, we'll, at the very least, we record it and show it and talk about it. Um, and there's no way to call in or, to, or is there? When no, they, they, I assume they do that on purpose. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, and I think when they release the recordings, they only release it to attendees. I think they're trying to force, you know, people to attend in person, which uh, I used to not like because basically I didn't, um, you know, I didn't want to spend the money and other things to attend. But honestly, when I did attend, there's there is magic that happens by being in person. I, yeah, of course. For sure. yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, there there was a lot of talk uh, in the Aries uh, working group stuff about um did peer two support apparently several aries uh, agents have did peer one support in various ways but they haven't really tried between the agents to make sure that their did peer one support is good and did peer one's complicated so that's why the support is uh you know uh not well formed even the spec uh, itself basically is not clear on on several parts so but they are talking about did peer two in terms of they have these things called legacy dids that are essentially not fully qualified dids so they don't start with did colon something right uh, but i think they're often used in the indie or sovereign world um and so they need to upgrade those dids to something and so it, it sounds like did peer two is what they're going to use to, to, to do a, a transform, um, which we supported. Uh, essentially, we had been talking about carry light uh, as, as a possible solution, but there's too much resistance. You know, not people don't know carry light. They don't trust it necessarily, um, and that's fine. But it, I think it was good that it was just mentioned. Uh, so carry's starting to get on, on people's radars um, because of the uh trust spanning protocol uh work and yeah the but, desire but why, why is that such a big issue you know i mean can we not uh can we not like, let's say from from the perspective of the tck right uh maybe there is this section where you don't need to resolve a did and it could be you know in, in those scenarios did key would work just fine right but in cases, in cases where you need to resolve a did, you know, from, from the actual uh, did URI, you need to go to the document and there you find 
the whole lot of metadata, right? This scenario, is it not possible uh, to define a, a least common denominator denominator for for that? So, for example, um, you know, essentially, you need to you need to have some sort of a re registry. Ideally, the registry is decentralized, but it doesn't have to be, right? So, so would it, in the context of the TCK, not be possible to to have a mock, um, you know? A, a, a mock registry or even use uh, IPFC, uh, IPFS, yeah, for, for, for yeah. these kinds of things. Why not, you know? Or or uh, you, you even use the, um, you know, the sovereign blockchain maybe, right? That's easy enough to set up, but we, we have the Docker containers. It's really, you know, up and running in no time. And you, and you have those four nodes um, and you can do all sorts of things. But uh, I'm... I haven't looked at it closely enough. If if that only supports the Zoff met method, maybe maybe that's the case, right? And and there's also this um, universal resolver project. Do you probably yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So so you know m maybe as as part of the TCK setup, uh, there is a definition of you know we use this or that uh, registry. And it, it may be IPFS or it may be sovereign. And, and there's this common interface to, to this resolver technology. So, so you know, first stop would be universal resolver with, with a number of DIT methods it, it supports. And, and you know what I mean? Then, then this whole discussion of, of DIT carry versus DIT peer v2 and so on and so on, uh, that would go away right if 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 the tck had a way of saying right you know if if it's if did key is not working in this scenario we use a b or c right yeah right um, okay yeah i think that um well like uh, i see alex just topped in um so when when he was doing the jff challenge Agents supported a variety of of did methods, uh, well, but a, a small set of, of did methods. And so, you know, if you didn't support uh, the same did method as someone else, there was issues. So, I think they're just trying to define uh, the simplest uh, set of did methods that that should be supported. Uh, and so did peer two just is, I think, gaining even more momentum as kind of one of those base implementations, because that's the other thing there's there's did peer it's confusing, you know, for people that, oh, I do support did peer well you don't just you don't support did peer two you, you support maybe zero and one or some, you know, and mm -hmm. so I think they're just trying to get some momentum, uh, you know, towards exactly what it will be. But I, 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 you are right that, um, yeah, we will. We'll, I think the goal for a lot of the agents is to be able to just support whatever the universal resolver will mm. will allow. So mm. um, we're almost out of time, Alex. Uh, I, I call if you can hear me. Uh, I, I got it. hey, I, I tagged you on. Um, so. Uh, uh, Thomas uh, is gotten pretty far uh, with his uh, W3C uh, credentials uh, for his Nessus uh, mm -hmm. agent for the uh, airport um, use case that, that he's uh, working on. So um, at some point in the nearish future, we would like to try to see if we can, um, you know, accept a, a credential and display it in Roots Wallet. Um, you know, essentially sure. showing integration with with his work, uh, you know, in hopes of uh, having a solid integration prior to IW at least recorded. Um, but you know, we might even be able to show some things at IW. Mm -hmm. So is that that's like that. The, is, that, is that the issue credential protocol? Have you implemented Thomas? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Issue verify schema. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we should be able to do some interrupt there. Uh, like good. Test it out. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, that's our time. Uh, it's good to see everybody. Rhoda was here. 
uh, and and so yeah, Alex, you missed him because he's flying out, but he was here for a bit. So that that was great. Good meeting. Good to see you all. And uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch uh, on the uh, on the Roots ID. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Channel. Yeah. Great. Have a good week. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs>